The hardest part of becoming independent is leaving home. The emperor penguin chicks are about to take the biggest step in their young lives. Left alone by their once doting parents, they must leave their icy birthplace and make their way to the sea. Every test they face hones skills they'll need later in life. But one challenge stops them in their tracks. A giant petrel. They try to flee, but running isn't an emperor's strong point. A slip is all the petrol needs. The chick is grabbed by his neck feathers, but the down just falls away. They form a defensive circle and prepare to stand their ground. Despite their chick-like appearance, they are close to a metre tall. Quite a size, even for a giant petrel. The chick towers to full height, protecting those behind. His defiance buys time. It's a standoff. Then, as if from nowhere, an Adeli, the feistiest penguin in the world. He fearlessly puts himself between the chicks and the petrol. Even petrels don't mess with Adelis. Plucky rescuer accompanies the chicks to the sea. Emperor Cam is there to see them on their way. But entering the water is a daunting prospect. Having an adult around must be reassuring even if it is a spy. The Adeli seems to be waiting for something too. Another penguin cam is also ready to see them go. Instead, other penguins start to arrive. More Adelis. Their rescuer was just the front runner. Cameras have captured other animals scavenging Vervara's kill. Sable, a type of weasel, eat whatever they find. Eagles, and even wild boar benefit from tiger kills in winter. And then Vivara makes her entrance. Oh, look at that, daytime as well. Yeah, she looks great. But she's look how cautious she is. She's smelling where you guys were. She still looks quite young. I mean, she is she, the first she, time is, she is, she does, she does look young, doesn't she? But yeah, she's, yeah. In, she's in good shape. Great shape. And the other camera we had here, don't tell me that didn't fire. Hang on. To see the markings like that, it's, it's, it's nice, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. But where are the cubs? I mean, she's... Well, we, we didn't actually get to the site where the cubs were stashed. And she didn't bring them down through here, unfortunately. So we missed that opportunity. 
collectively with the, the radio collar, the camera traps, and these videos, we've gotten a much better understanding of the way mothers interact and take care of their cubs. Up until this point, we had always thought that females would leave their cubs at a kill site and then go off hunting and then go back to the kill site, get the cubs and bring it to the new kill. But we've seen in this video right here, they don't leave their cubs at the kills. And that, that makes sense because that's a dangerous spot. We've seen through these camera traps, all these other carnivores coming through, lynx and sable and wi even wild boar coming in. So that's actually a dangerous place to leave your cubs. So she takes them off someplace. And we didn't, we didn't really realize that until we started getting some of this footage. The Siberian tiger is one of the world's most endangered animals. Footage like this is invaluable. Only by studying this remarkable animal's natural behavior can scientists learn how to protect it. And while we haven't seen the cubs, it looks like Vivara has got over her camera shyness. safely ashore, but they could still face months of hunger. Finding food is not so easy on this cold and barren coast. The search may be a long one. Polar bears have an extraordinarily sensitive sense of smell, and she has caught a faint whiff of something promising. It's the immense carcass of a bowhead whale. A whale carcass could provide more than any one family could eat. But they're not the first here to find it, by any means. The smell has brought in bears from miles away. Bear families seldom get on with one another. She's taking a risk bringing her cubs here. Male bears can and do kill and eat small cubs. Another family challenges her. She must decide whether to compete for food or run away and go hungry. She keeps her cubs close to her and stands her ground. Their mother's courage has won the cubs a meal. Sunlight brings a flush of new greenery to the forest floor. These plant pioneers now have full access to the endless summer sunshine. Fireweed is the first to stake its claim. It flowers through the hazy days, and Alaskans call it summer's timekeeper. 
the flowers unfold from the bottom of the plant. When they reach the top, that's the end of summer. It's a warning that despite the summer heat, the first snows of winter are only weeks away. High up in the Talkeetna Mountains, there's one Alaskan who's already prepared. The collared pika. He spent his entire summer hard at work. When the winter comes, his favorite grasses and sedges will be buried under the snow. But he's not worried. He's been saving food for the lean months ahead. Hidden among the rocks is his winter larder. He's carefully positioned it to catch the sun's rays, which dry and cure his supply. Half a meter wide and 30 centimeters deep, this haystack is his survival rations. He's chosen the contents meticulously. He's picked some toxic plants. These will decompose slower and keep food for eating fresher for longer. Like all Alaskans, he knows that winter preparations start early. And you have to make the most of summer's bounty. The sun is getting lower. Summer is drawing to a close. The couples now face weeks of waiting while their eggs develop. But one pair appears to have got ahead of schedule. A bulge on a penguin's belly is normally the sign of a parent keeping an egg warm on its feet. <laughs> But she seems to be trying to keep a snowball warm. They appear to be getting in some practice for the real thing. depths of winter, food is desperately hard to find. The head of the family leads them to the edge of their territory in search of something to eat. The only food here is wretchedly unnourishing. Bark, moss and lichen. There's hardly enough to sustain one monkey, let alone a family. But they share it peaceably. Survival depends on the group keeping together. In these mountains, any food is precious. A 
rival group. They too are searching for food. The two males go head to head. The females join the fray. Outnumbered, the intruders retreat. Their leader is the last to go. The wolves may have remained hidden up until now, but the team's remote cameras could well capture images of the pack as they pass through the valley in search of food. There are plenty of deer. There are snowshoe hares, their huge feet perfectly adapted to hop across the deep snow. Bull moose, jousting with each other, totally unaware of the camera just a meter away. Following the prey come the predators. The elusive bobcat. The cougar, North America's biggest cat. They've benefited from the wolf's long absence. These valleys are alive with wildlife, but there is no sign of the lookout pack. The next day, Jasmine is called out at dawn Local biologist Scott Fitkin has heard wolves howling in the valley. Oh, I think I hear them. standing up. I don't think I've ever been this close to wolves. He's a phantom. What's he doing? I have no idea. Don't know. I shouldn't say he. He or she is up there on that hillside somewhere and we can't see him. I would love it if one of them is a breeding female. I, I would be so happy. So what's that on the, on the ridge of there? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Look at that, that there's a wolf. Two wolves, oh my gosh. I can't believe my eyes. So we just spotted two wolves 
up on the ridge. It's so exciting. And they're just so calm. Well, they're the lords of their domain, yeah. so. Wow, that is amazing. Oh my God. The bereaved couples are desperate. They look for another chick to care for. And they don't mind if it's someone else's. They plan a kidnap. The mother's defense is to sit tight and stop her chick being stolen. But the kidnappers won't be put off easily. Just in time, her partner returns, spruced up from the shower. He takes on the would-be kidnappers. The fight gets even more heated, but there are few tougher than a rock hopper. They can take the punishment as well as dish it out. The baby snatchers have had enough, and the male returns to his mate. He might need another shower, but at least his chick is safe. Kidnapping is also rife in the emperor colony. The newly walking chicks are irresistible to females that have lost their own chicks or failed to breed. The mother tries to repel the kidnappers with a few well-aimed pecks, but they won't give up. And others had the same idea. The chick heads for the main colony, hoping to find protection among the crowds. She disappears in a mass of bodies and reappears alone. But it's only for a moment. A large crowd has gathered, all trying to adopt the chick. She's soon overwhelmed by doting admirers. One child snatcher tries to force the chick into her pouch, but she's way too big. She makes a break for it, then gives them the runaround through the colony. Finally, they have her surrounded. They're all desperate to mother her. She's in danger of being smothered with love. But the fluff ball is accidentally flipped away and caught by her mother. She'll stay closer to her next time. Also roaming far and wide in the extensive forests here are the elusive snow monkeys. But winter shrinks their feeding grounds, making them easier to spot. Just below us, look at that. Oh my god. Okay. Big. We are so, so lucky. This is brilliant. That is amazing. 
I'll get out without that. It's not that little bit out of nowhere. This is exactly what I was saying. They're feeding in the top of the pine trees. And you can see this one here actually has a pine cone in its hands. And it's just nibbling away to get the, the seeds that are inside it. And they're all just perched precariously over the top of the water, aren't they? That's fabulous. In fact, once you get your eye in, there's dozens of them. Yeah, there yeah. are, yeah. You can see how the actual waves almost crashing below them, clear water. Yeah. And a monkey's <laughs> up above it. I know. It's such a bizarre sight. You know, I've filmed primates all over the world, but there's nowhere that it's like this. You know, there's nowhere where they're living in a place where it's so cold, so challenging. The monkeys here are the most northern dwelling primates in the world. It's now mid-January and the chicks are quickly growing. Too big to sit under the parent, they're starting to discover there's a world beyond the nest. Down behind the boat shed, this plucky little fellow, still a couple of months from learning the true purpose of flippers, is taking his first uncertain steps towards independence. Soon, the chick is given a very valuable lesson. Don't annoy the neighbors. For now, chicks won't dare venture far from the nest. The shortest excursion provides plenty of opportunity to practice the tricky art of rock climbing. Food is still by far the biggest preoccupation, but instead of just being fed on demand, the chicks are now being made to work for it. The parent, forcing its chicks to chase for a feed, encourages competition, where the strongest and most determined gets fed first. Food chasing also helps the chicks build up strength in preparation for the time when they'll need to fend for themselves. By adulthood, penguins become such fast runners that over short distances they can outrun a human. This is Dead Horse. Two hundred and fifty miles north of the Arctic Circle, and one of the coldest, remotest settlements on Earth. Dead horse only exists because there are huge reserves of oil to be extracted from below the ice. It's not the most welcoming place for a tiny arctic fox.
first, he has to get past the local heavies. Red foxes followed the oil workers here, and they've made themselves at home. Twice the size of the Arctic fox, he's quite capable of killing any trespassers on his patch. But the little fox is hungry enough to take the risk. Everyone knows you shouldn't put bare flesh on freezing metal. But the fox has to use his tongue to thaw out the frozen scrap. It's the kind of place where you have to hold your nerve. Freezing temperatures don't stop the oil workers going about their business. Winter is a good time to get those awkward little jobs out of the way. Like moving a 2,000 ton drilling rig to a new field. Probably best not to try and push your luck too far. In Alaska, the weather changes rapidly. A dangerous time for a mother and baby. While she tries to cope, those with fewer responsibilities take it easy. Otters can eat a quarter of their weight in food each day, but even that's not enough for a nursing mother. She must find a meal, whatever the weather. And with the sea freezing, she can't leave him in the water. With her baby safe on a raft of ice, she heads to her favourite fishing spot. Despite the cold, there's plenty of seafood to be found. Her pup should be safe where she left him. But what baby can ever stay still? At this age, his fur isn't fully waterproof. And as the temperatures drop, the sea starts to freeze. His mother must find him fast. But he isn't where she left him. As the slush turns to ice, the pup is struggling. All he can do is call for help.
but his cries are lost in the blizzard. Just in time. Now for some tender loving care. 